Hi everyone, my name is Mika Kahnwalker. Thanks for joining us to learn a little bit more about the Faculty of Music at Wilfrid Laurier University. My role at the university is the Outreach and Student Recruitment Coordinator and I'm here to help you figure out if life at Laurier and specifically in our faculty is right for what you want to achieve at your post-secondary decision. Uh, I wanna introduce Kathy Gauchi, who is our Academic Advisor and Auditions Coordinator. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Mika. Yes, uh, my name is Kathy, and I'm the Academic Advisor and Auditions Coordinator. So I'm in charge of um, all your academic advising needs when you decide to come to Laurier for your, for your degree. And then I also coordinate all the aspects of the audition. So if you're auditioning at Laurier, you'll be hearing from me a, a lot um, during the time that you are building up to your audition and afterwards. And we have some students with us here today, so I'm going to turn it over to Adriana and have her introduce herself. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today uh, to learn a little bit more about music at Laurier, which is something I love so much. I'm in my fourth year of music therapy at Laurier, and it's been such a great experience so far. I'm also a trumpet player. I've been involved in a bunch of things in the Faculty of Music, including FAMSA, our Faculty of Music Students Association. I've been in the Brass Ensemble, the Symphony Orchestra, and the Wind Orchestra. So I've had so many great experiences with my peers over the last four years. So I'm really looking forward to telling you a bit more about it. Great, and then we have Jason with us as well. Jason, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, for sure. Hey, everyone. My name is Jason, and I'm a fourth year community music student at Laurier. And yeah, faculty of music at Laurier is my first choice when I was applying, and I have no regrets. Um, originally, I wanted to do music therapy, but turns out uh, music therapy wasn't quite the right path for me. So I stuck with community music, and here I am now. Um, I was involved in the community music ensemble. Um, I'm involved in the Association of Association of Music Creators, which is kind of like a composition club. And yeah, we just have a lot of stuff to talk to you today about, and I'm excited. Great. Thanks, Jason. And last but not least, we have Sharon. Sharon, if you want to introduce yourself, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharon. I'm a third year international music um, student here at Laurier, obviously, and um, uh, I'm from Bahrain, Middle East. I play the violin. Um, Laurier has given me many opportunities to become heavily involved with the music faculty, especially. I've been involved with WLU SNAPS, which is a student national association of teaching. Um, here, um, I got to make wonderful connections with many of my peers. And uh, right now I'm also heavily involved with the Music Therapy Students Association. So that's really interesting to see how music therapy can um, change the lives of many and uh, educate so many more about what music therapy is and the importance of music therapy in um, today's world. So excited, to, uh, excited for this presentation. So take it away, you guys. Wonderful, thanks everyone. Okay, so uh, here's a little bit about our campus. So we have around 20,000 students at the university. Um, we have 80 plus undergrad programs and we've been voted number one sustainable campus in Ontario. Lots of student led clubs and groups, just like our students mentioned, both in our faculty and tons that are outside of the faculty that you can join. Here is a little bit about our undergraduate program. So students applying to our program from high school are typically moving into our Bachelor of Music. But before you decide uh, Bachelor of Music for sure, you do have to decide which area of our Bachelor of Music you'd like to audition. So we have two areas. We have our Bachelor of Music Common Year or our Bachelor of Music in Community Music. So this is a decision we're gonna help you figure out today which program is right for you. And there's always options to be able to pursue uh, an audition on in either area as well. Both of these programs can also lead to our Bachelor of Music Therapy. So like Adriana mentioned, she is in her fourth year of Bachelor of Music Therapy and she began in our Bachelor of Music Common Year program. Now let's get into a little bit about what these programs are to help you figure out which one is right for you. So Bachelor of Music Common Year. 
this program is uses a model of teaching that is very tied to kind of a classical European conservatory style of teaching. That means most of the students auditioning for our program have one major instrument and they're typically performing within the classical genre and often tied to the Royal Conservatory of Music levels of teaching. Now you don't have to have that type of training under your belt, but the types of pieces that we find in the, that type of, um, those types of books will be closely tied to what we're looking at in our audition requirements. Um, we have outstanding faculty members, many of them that have performed internationally or been part of a number of academic research opportunities internationally. We really focus on well-rounded students. We do have a performance-based program, small classes, and very flexible. You don't have to decide what you want to do right away. You do have the option to be able to take a number of classes within our common year and then decide where you want to go. And when I say where you want to go, here are the different specializations, our concentrations that you can choose from. Composition, music education, music history, theory and critical analysis, integrated musical arts, performance and self-directed studies. So these areas are what we try to you know, expose you to in your first year. And then we want to give you the chance to decide what is right for you later on. Now, there's a number of different factors that are tied to our common year program that I feel um, are really important to highlight. So the first one I actually want Adriana to talk a little bit about is being paired with a studio instructor and re receiving weekly hour long lessons. Adriana, can you talk a little bit about this experience? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I've been very lucky to have a great studio professor for the last four years. Um, so from before my audition even, I got to start forming a relationship with my professor. And from day one of first year up until now, even in my fourth year, we've seen each other every week. Um, he's seen all the highs and lows in my university career. Um, and he's definitely been um, one of my biggest support systems at the university. And he's such a great artist, really. I've learned so much from him. The whole trumpet studio with Guy is such a great experience because not only do we learn from him but we learn from each other um we'll go into this later but i've learned so much about my about music from my studio accompanist who is such an incredible musician as well um so getting to watch my professor perform and letting him critique me in lessons and master classes has been such a great experience because it's both ways we both learn from each other and we both really enjoy getting to spend that hour together every week a great time that's amazing and we want you to meet our instructors and our faculty members so what i would say is adriana met guy few who is our trumpet instructor prior to her audition if you would like to get to know our studio instructors please reach out to us we have an email at the very end it's choose music at wlu.ca let us know your major instrument and we will connect you with that person that you may be paired with while you're here so thank you adriana we also have weekly master classes. So master classes are when a studio instructor, so let's take a guy few for instance, all of his students that are within first, second, third and fourth year would meet together and play repertoire for one another and, and really form that deep connection within their studio. We also sometimes bring in guests. So in some of them, uh, we'll bring in a professional artist from the outside, get either all of our trumpets or brass students together and get feedback that way. So it's a great opportunity both to learn in this smaller environment that you're you know, meeting people throughout our whole program, but also being able to learn from people outside of our building itself. Ensembles. Adriana, what ensemble were you a part of? So I've been in the Laurier Symphony Orchestra and I've been in the Wind Orchestra twice. So that was a, a big chunk of my Laurier experience. So that was a great time with Dr. Kuhn especially. <laughs> Yeah, so students are placed in an ensemble each year based on a ensemble audition, which is blind. So we don't know who the student is, but we are placing students to be able to have very fulsome ensembles to perform together. Um, we have students performing on campus in our recital hall and theater auditorium typically. Um, and virtually we are doing a number of new initiatives this year to be able to give some similar experiences to our students. Now, 
Adriana mentioned this. So our coach accompanists. So we at, a, at Laurier have subsidized professional coach accompanists. These are people that are on our staff that are here to accompany you while playing, but also to coach you. So I think, what does this look like in your week, Adriana? So every week I have a slotted time that is just for me and my accompanists to rehearse my repertoire and to get feedback. So since I'm not a performance major, I don't have the biggest chunk of time, but you do get more time when you are performing for your grad recital and all those important projects. Um, but it's a really great experience. And even remotely, my accompanist has been so helpful getting me recordings and all sorts of things to help me do my best work. It's been great. Amazing. So this is that added level of care that our program has to make sure that you're at your best. And it's another touch point with a faculty and instructor who, who really knows you. Like Adrian, Adriana mentioned, the highs and lows of university life, um, days that are really great, days are a little bit harder. There's this other person that's going to be consistent for you, checking in, making sure you're okay throughout uh, your time with us. All right, we're gonna transition now to our Bachelor of Music in Community Music. So this community music is a concentration within our Bachelor of Music that students begin right from their first year. You have to know that this is of interest while uh, pursuing our audition as our audition requirements are a bit different. But the main thing, we accept auditions of students on any instrument. And you can see there's an S there in brackets because you can play them more, you can play more than just one. You don't have to play only one. And the genre of the music that you are pursuing at the audition um, can be whatever. It can be combinations of genres as well. Um, Jason, can you talk a little bit about your uh, audition with us? Yeah, so in my audition, I played the piano as my main instrument. So the that was the only instrument I played, but the genres of songs I play where I played, I played the Bach, I played a jazz tune and I played a tune that I composed in my last year of high school. Amazing. Thank you. Um, so like Jason, he had one instrument. You can play multiple. It doesn't matter. We, we really want to see what you do best. I always say, if you picked up a trumpet last week, probably don't choose to audition on a piece like that. But we are very, very open um, to different styles of performing in different backgrounds. The program itself is, is a really emphasis on working collaboratively, collaboratively, excuse me, working as a group, working together. How can we take music and apply it to different community set settings to create positive change? Sharon, do you think you can talk a little bit about what community music means to you? A lot of people watching this may not be familiar with what community music is. Right. That's interesting. That, that's actually one of the wonderful questions that we have as community musicians. But according to my second year placement, um, I had a wonderful opportunity with my peers to um, facilitate one hour sessions at, um, at the uh, Sunbeam Center uh, in Kitchener. And basically what I've concluded is that it's basically incorporating music into community settings and improving those communal relationships and making it more accessible for people um, coming from all backgrounds. Um, and however able they may be, you have to be able to be flexible enough of a facilitator to do that. And that's what our profs at Laurier train us to do. We also learned how to collaboratively uh, make music. And as you said, Micah, uh, our leadership skills and um, the next thing that I learned in my third year, actually I'm learning now is that music is used as an intervention and connection to create progress and uh, improve lifestyles basically. Amazing. Yeah, that's about that. Can I ask you one more question, Sharon? The Sunbeam Center, what, what yeah. was that all about? That name we, we know, but can yeah. you talk a little bit more? Um, yeah, so basically the organization is a charitable organization. Um, they have a lot of help from the um, town and um, the uh, community around them, which is great and um, just fosters that communal feeling. So it made us feel a lot more inclined to actually be a part of the organization. And uh, we facilitated one hour sessions weekly um, for people who are less abled. We did hello and goodbye songs to start the sessions and end the sessions. And um, progressively, um, this, this placement lasted for about one and a half to two months. Um, and 
progressively we started building relationships with the people and uh, it was wonderful because we looked forward to them as much as they look forward to us every week and we were interested in like creating different um, um, sessions that were more interactive and more like um, centered around the person who's receiving it rather than our talents being put out over there so the medium was great and the product was even better so it's awesome yeah so you can see we want to teach you in this program how you can go out and facilitate community music. So Sharon was doing that in her third year. I'm sure Jason has examples too, but we really want to give you that hands-on um, learning, teaching, putting you in the real world, and also having faculty there to be able to support you. So what happens if someone doesn't show up or it doesn't go according to plan? How can we support you so you know when you're graduating what, um, what life looks like and, and what you can accomplish with community music? So four kind of areas, again, that are closely tied to our program, group instrument technique classes. So you can see here students uh, playing the djembe. So instead of a textbook in your one class, you'll be receiving a djembe. Uh, and you will be using that to be able to learn, again, how to involve multiple people in these community music sessions. You'll also be learning... Um, You'll be focusing on voice, guitar, piano. Now, even if these uh, are instruments you've never you know, used before or done before, we're gonna kind of teach you the basics, but how you can apply learning those instruments into sessions like Sharon had mentioned. Community music ensemble. Jason, could you talk a little bit about the community music ensemble? Yeah, for sure. So, um... In my, in my first year, our program was only two years old. So our community music ensemble was not as big as it is now. Now we have all four years of the undergrad in the ensemble. So it's about an ensemble of 100 to 200 people. Um, so the work that we do is every, every semester we put on a big concert for the community that involves everybody in the ensemble. So we'll tend to do smaller works with small groups. Um, and then we'll do, usually we'll do one big piece with everybody. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, our, our director, Brent Rowan, he's a great guy. He loves to do kind of like these spontaneous uh, flash mobs on campus or elsewhere. They're not very spontaneous because, you know, it takes about an hour to set up. And while you're setting up, people know that something's going to go on, but it, it's great. It's, um, it's as spontaneous as we can be, and people love it. People love live music in the middle of the concourse. Uh, we also do commun community events with kind of our smaller ensembles within our big ensembles. For example, in my second year, we, or in my third year, sorry, we uh, broke up into smaller groups and we did projects. My group, we actually had a concert series plan at the Working Center in Kitchener. Um, Sadly, because of COVID, it was cut short, but we did get at least one concert in, and uh, it was a good time. People at the, in the kitchen at the working center really liked it. We really enjoyed playing music there. Our theme was kind of like um, uh, a throwback theme, so we did music from the 50s and 60s. We were going to do music from 70s, 80s, and then we we're going to do music from like 90s and 2000s. Um, so that's like a snippet of kind of what community music ensemble is. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. And you can see with our images, we've tried to represent like, yes, we have numerous people performing all together at some points, but then our community music ensemble does kind of break apart into these smaller groups that can focus on repertoire as, um, as a unit, which is wonderful. Now to kind of play on the working center thing you mentioned, Jason, we do, we do have lots of community-based opportunities. So chances for you to go out into the community um, and be able to create music. So those come upon us at different times of the years. And we're always trying to connect students with these different organizations to be able to um, do just that. Um, Sharon, do you have any experience going out in the community other than your placement, obviously, to, to do something like Jason mentioned? Well, not exactly, but I remember in first year, we went to a retirement home just to see what um, music was like for them. And uh, we got to interview some of the um, residents at the retirement home and uh, we have to get back with like information. So that yeah. was fun. That was really good. We didn't interact with them uh, in a musical manner, which I felt like was really good before we actually get into our placement next year. 
um, just to see from a third person perspective what the experience is like for both parties. So yeah. Amazing. And what I would say now too is, is with COVID, right? We, we have communities that are connecting over things like Zoom, how we, how we are today. So there's, there's going to be a lot of need for community musicians to be able to bring that joy and excitement to us in however our communities look moving forward. So whether it's something online, whether it's in person in smaller groups, communities themselves can be very small and very large. So something to keep in mind. Uh, now, finally, capstone project. Capstone projects are something that students pursue in their fourth year. Jason is actually in his fourth, fourth year, so is pursuing his now. Can you can you talk a little bit about what a capstone project is all about? Yeah, for sure. Um, so capstone projects are usually kind of your culminating tasks at the end of your undergrad, which you take everything that you learn within the program, outside of the program, in your previous three years, and you kind of uh, put it together and tie a bow on it and present it and say hey this is my what I learned from community music this is how I can use community music to make a social impact within uh, whatever community you choose to have a social impact on so for example I'm doing my capstone project I'm doing a research uh, study on the experience of in-person worship versus a virtual worship experience within a church setting um, I have a lot of friends that are doing um, more hands-on kind of performance space capstone. So for example, um, I have friends that are putting on virtual coffee houses. Um, actually, previously before COVID happened, my plan for a capstone project was uh, to work with a high school to do kind of like a jazz and dessert night or jazz or dinner dance night to kind of do a fundraiser with them to fundraise uh, for the music program. Um, I have one friend who's doing um, teaching doing a teaching kind of music lessons, but they're doing it with a boxing club. So they want to um, do more of a kind of rhythm heavy, uh, rhythm heavy music lessons series with with a certain, I think high school and middle school kids. Yeah, so those are pretty cool. cool. That's amazing, Jason. Thank you for sharing and good luck on your capstone project. Um, it's kind of like Jason mentioned the culminating kind of what have I learned through my four years and how can I put it to action. So. We wish you great luck with your, your research project, Jason. Thank you. All right, transitioning now to music therapy before we jump into auditions. Um, our Bachelor of Music Therapy is the only program at the undergraduate level uh, in Ontario. So we're the place to come if you're looking to study in Ontario. So music therapy, we're helping people to heal both physically, emotionally, intellectually. Um, and just like spoken therapy, we're kind of using music to be able to create, to help people kind of create a narrative to around what they're trying to, to process. Um, it's an amazing program where we're working with clients. So that's a big thing is that you're working with people in group settings, in individual settings. We wanna get you as a student out there and be able to participate in, in real world placements. So you can see in your third year, so that would be your first year being in music therapy, which we'll talk about in a minute, you'll be in group placements. So there will be multiple um, clients, we call them. There's going to be multiple students and, and also a Laurier music therapist instructor. And all of you will work together to be able to facilitate different sessions. Moving to your fourth year, you will be in group and individual. So you'll be one-on-one, -on -one, again, with a supervisor, music therapy instructor. Um, and then in your winter term, you're gonna jump into our music therapy internship. So to be a music therapist in Canada, you are required to have a bachelor of music therapy and a 1000 hour internship. So we have incorporated that into our program to allow you to graduate with everything you need to write a national test that will then certify you to be a music therapist working in Canada. Um, but these placements are really kind of where you're learning the real world application of music therapy. And I know Adriana um, has done these types of placements. So I was wondering if you could just give an example of where you worked and kind of what it meant to you to work with some real clients. Yeah, thanks, Mika. Um, this program is so special because you get to start using the clinical techniques that you learn um, in classes right away in your placements. So the things you're learning, you're applying right away in real time. So you get to um, workshop them in class and then try them out with your real clients and see how it goes with them. 
and it really gives you um, a real uh, sneak peek at what it's like to work in the field. So last year, um, when I was in my third year, I had my group placements at a high school in the Waterloo area, and I was working in a special education classroom. So my group of clients mostly had diagnoses of Down syndrome, or they were on the autism spectrum for the most part. So a lot of what we did was working towards speech goals, um, motor skills, gaining motor skills, and uh, we were really working on group social skills as well. So having those clients together in a space once a week together, um, that was one of the best things was facilitating a group community feel for them, helping them improve turn taking, listening, um, sharing. Those are really important skills that they're going to be applying in every other aspect of life. So it was really great to work on those things with them. And this year I'm doing group and individual placements at the same time. So I get to do even more uh, trying out of new techniques. So I'm really enjoying right now my group. They are all, um, they all have a diagnosis of Down syndrome and my individual placement uh, also has a learning disability. And we're working on um, vocal skills, particularly with her. So her vocal apraxia um, is presenting some challenges for breathing and speaking. So those are the things we're trying to address in sessions. And that's something I've really enjoyed trying out is doing breathing techniques, singing, um, emotional expression, um, and even finding ways to work on turn taking, even when you're in an individual session, turn taking between the client and the student music therapist. So those are really important skills to, to learn when you're in of any age in any place. So it's really great to work on those skills with them. That was wonderful to hear. And I hope those sessions continue to be as valuable as your first ones were. So thank you. Um, okay, so to, to move into our music therapy program, we had mentioned before how you'll begin in our Bachelor of Music um, Common Year or Community Music. In your very first year, you will be required to take Intro to Music Therapy as well as Psychology courses. We're going to take a peek at these grades. We're going to look at an interview where we're assessing your interpersonal skills, um, and we, we may require a short audition of you as well. And this combination of everything that you've completed in your first two years is really going to allow us to allow you to make the transition to the Bachelor of Music Therapy. Um, your first year will incorporate, like I mentioned, intro to music therapy and psychology courses. Um, for either of uh, these areas, you would be able to take intro to music therapy, psychology 100 and psychology 101. Um, and then again, we'll be looking at that interview with our music therapy coordinator. I think Kathy may be there as well, depending on the year, um, to be able to, for you to make the transition. So that's how you move into our program. And again, that happens at the end of your second year, moving into your third year. So you'd be in the Bachelor of Music for two years, and then you'd finish your time at Laurier with your third and fourth year. Um, so a total of four years at Laurier, and you graduate with your Bachelor of Music Therapy. All right, Kathy, it's your turn. Audition info. Yeah, we're going to briefly talk about auditions today um, and give you some heads up on some information that we have at this time. And then um, we'll probably have another session later on that gets down to the nitty gritty of everything in an audition. Uh, so Mika, next slide, please. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is you're applying in the Ontario University Application Center, OUAC. And when you're there, you're going to see four choices. You're gonna see the Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Music with Management Option, Bachelor of Music Community Music, and Bachelor of Music Community Music with the Management Option. So we really only have the two, the two programs, the Bachelor of Music and Community Music, and the Management Option is just an extra. Uh, so next slide, please. So the Management Option is four courses, uh, four credits, sorry, eight courses in business management courses as part of your four-year music degree. And if you sign up through OUAC for the management option, it's based on direct entry based on your high school incoming average being 85% or above. If you're not interested in the management option, then don't apply 
in OEWAP for the management option. If you're interested in the management option, only apply for the one with the management option. You don't have to say apply for Bachelor of Community Music and Bachelor of Community Music with the management option. Just apply for one of them. Okay, we don't want you wasting your time with second applications. Once you've applied to OELAG, it takes us a couple of days to get your application to the university. We're already starting to receive some, so that's great. You're going to receive an email from us confirming that you've received your application. And then we have an online audition portal, and it's going to open December 15th. And this is where you're going to book your audition. If by December 15th you haven't received an email titled audition application information, um, then you need to email us and uh, we'll get that to you. Sometimes it lands in people's junk mail and that seems to be the issue. Uh, so we need to make sure that you get that email. It's an email that's going to contain a link and a password to our audition portal. Um, and it's going, and if you're applying to both programs, the Bachelor of Music and the Bachelor of Music Community Music, you're gonna receive separate emails, there's separate applications, separate audition requirements and a separate fee. Um, so again, if you don't receive the email, you can contact us. Uh, so for, for 2021, uh, right now our auditions are being planned for being remote, being virtual, probably through Zoom. Our auditions will take place from January to April. Um, and then depending on health and safety guidelines, we might be, having, be able to have some in-person audition um, if people really want to come for an in-person audition. So to receive your audition, you must complete the following audition information in our audition portal in December. You're gonna give us some more contact information. You're gonna give us the instruments that you're gonna be auditioning on. Choice of three potential remote audition days. There'll be a drop down menu pertaining to your instrument. You're gonna give us an email contact and name for a reference that's gonna be contacted automatically. Um, and then you're gonna update us on kind of your academic and your music background. And then there's an option there to upload a digital portfolio. A lot, an awful lot of people are composers and might already have pieces composed, or maybe you have a YouTube channel or a SoundCloud link or anything that you want us to show more of your stuff. Um, you have an option there to upload your digital portfolio, and then you play, pay your audition fee of $60 by credit card online at the same time. So what we're looking for at the Faculty of Music and how we evaluate your application is that you have to have 75% or higher on your top six 4U or 4M courses. Your 4U English has to be at a minimum of 60%. You're gonna have your audition. Normally we would have your theory test, but for this year for 2021, since our auditions are going to be remote, we're not having any theory test at all, but we will be looking at your application to see what type of theory level you're at. And then you're going to have an interview on uh, remotely as well with a faculty member, which is more of an academic side, talking more about your interests and also giving you an opportunity to ask us questions about our program. If you live, there's going to be some options for people. If you live in a different time zone or have some accessibility issues with remote auditions, that you're going to be able to still do a video audition. And then once you apply for that, you'll get the instructions on how to submit your audition uh, through YouTube. And then after that, a faculty member might set up a phone or a Zoom interview. So looking for the correct repertoire, making sure that you're preparing the right um, repertoire for the right instrument for the right program. So you're gonna to go to wlu.ca slash music. You're gonna click on programs and then select whether you're going to the Bachelor of Music, which is the common year program or the community music program, and then click on applying and auditioning and find the right repertoire uh, for the program that you're auditioning for. And remembering that if you are applying to both programs that you have two separate sets of repertoire um, and two, for two very different styles of programs. And now as we've talked uh, earlier about how our programs that you have an accompanist with you for the four years that you're studying, we also have the availability of our accompanist for our in-person auditions. So you have the choice of on our remote auditions using a recorded accompaniment, using your own accompanist. Um, and if, you're, if we happen to be in person, you can use a Laurier professional accompanist. You can use your own accompanist. And community music, because some of your repertoire is so different, um, you're able to use recorded backtracks in a live audition as well. And we might have some help later on. We're discussing some availabilities 
of recorded accompaniment um, to ease the burden of you hunting out some of them. So we'll have some announcements about that later on closer to auditions as well. So some advice from us. Let's first hear from Adriana. Do you want to tell us what your audition process was like? Sure thing, Kathy. Um, I did my audition at Laurier um, on trumpet and on piano, actually, both of them for uh, Common Year, because I honestly couldn't make up my mind which I liked better. Um, but that really gave me a good sense, being able to audition on both. I got to meet the professors for both. I got to ask them my questions. And I ended up feeling that it was the best fit for me to come to Laurier on trumpet. And I have no regrets because I've loved my ensemble experience and my master classes and my professor so much. But I think it's great to keep your doors open. If you're interested in common year and community music, why not audition for both and see which one you prefer? Or if you're like me and you have multiple loves, then audition with both and see what goes better because maybe you'll realize in that experience which is something you'd prefer to pursue in university and which you'd rather keep for yourself as your de-stress instrument um, that you're not doing academically in university all the time. So, you know, just stay calm, do what you think is best for you and um, pick music that you think best expresses um, your capabilities. If you're great with expressive playing, do that. If you're great with technical stuff, pick, pick something crazy, you know, do whatever is best for you. And your professors want to see what your strengths are um, in your audition. So be sure to, to showcase what you're best at. Great. Thanks, Adriana. Jason, do you want to talk a little bit about how you felt coming in person for your audition? Yeah, I had a had a lot of butterflies in my stomach when I was I remember I remember it was back in May of 2017 and we arrived at Lori, my parents and I, and I was like, oh, I don't know where the music building is. And then someone pointed me to this big building. It looked like it had about five or six floors. I'm like, oh, I don't know what floor is on. And so I was yeah, I was nervous for sure. But uh, once I got oriented, I, I got into I got into where I was supposed to go. Um, and then they welcome me into the room and they're like, hey, so how are you? We did a little talking. They want to get to know me. And then they're like, yeah, can we uh, hear some of your music? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I play for them and then we talk some more. And then I think the overall vibe is they really, um, the auditioners, they really want to know you as a musician, not just how technical you are on your instrument. They really want to know your music. They really want to know uh, what you're passionate about in music. Um, and it's through your playing, it's through telling them about the works that you're doing, uh, the instrument you play, the genres that you love, that they really get to know who you are as a musician. And, and yeah, I felt like in that short 20 minutes or 30 minutes that we had, um, I told a lot about myself that I, I didn't even know that, you know, that I, I, who I was as a musician. So it was great. They, um, I, I remember Brent Rowan, who is now the community music ensemble director, um, who I work for now like three three years. He was one of the people who auditioned, who was at my audition, and yeah, we got along just fine. So great, great, thanks. Now, normally when we're in person with our auditions, there'll be signage and we have our audition assistants guiding you around for your entire day. And there's tons of people to talk to and, and uh, practice rooms and places for you to relax and get all your questions asked. Uh, with our remote auditions, we're working on having the same type of experience where you're gonna have the opportunity to talk to students, to talk to instructors, to have your audition, to have your interview, and then you know even the possibility of having a virtual building tour. And we're kind of working on all those things so that you still get that same audition feeling even though we're going to be remote. So some of our best advice to you is find a teacher that's going to help you prepare for your audition properly, um, making sure that you share with them the guidelines uh, of Laurier's auditions and uh, work towards uh, getting your pieces up to the standard that are, are good for a university audition and, and take that advice from a teacher. 
um, preparing the appropriate repertoire, which we made sure in a previous slide that you know where to find that. Dressing for success. Even if we're going to be in remote auditions, remember, you're basically applying for a job. Um, so making sure that you're dressed appropriately um, and make sure that you practice in those clothing so that you don't do the old, as I always say, the violin student that came in with the lovely suit on, but then discovered they couldn't lift up their arms as and be as comfortable as they were when they were playing. So make sure whatever you're going to dress in that you make sure you practice. And again, take a deep breath, be yourself. Our overall, our panels like to be friendly and are just wanting to get to know you um, and, and help guide you through the best, most positive audition day that we can and make you comfortable about choosing Morier. So once your uh, audition is over, um, most applicants will hear from us by email once all the auditions for their instruments have been taken place. We do try and get some out early if we can, um, and but this might not be until April. And it's all done by email now. Nothing's done by snail mail. So you'll get a recommendation from the Faculty of Music that we would like you to come to the Faculty of Music. And then um, the university will look through your academics and make sure that you meet all the admission requirements and send you your official offer of admission through uh, your email and through your OUAC uh, account. If you're not recommended to come to Laurier, uh, there, there will always be an opportunity for Laurier Recruitment Admissions to look at your grades and maybe suggest an alternate offer for admission outside of the Faculty of Music, which might be in general arts. So uh, we're hoping, hoping for uh, another audition information website in early January that will go in detail what our remote or in-person auditions will look like. So if you have any Faculty of Music questions, if it's audition related, uh, we'd appreciate you emailing music auditions at WLU. If it's program related, choose music at WLU. And if you have university related questions, choose Laurier at WLU.ca. So overall, um, I just want to jump back in and maybe ask each of our students here just to give some advice, maybe to their former selves or high school selves when they were deciding to apply to Laurier. Um, I'm sure we have lots of nervous students at home. What, what advice would you give? Let's start with Sharon. Okay, then. Um, I have a couple of things. I have a, I have a long list, but we're going we're gonna to highlight just one thing. Um, take a deep breath and um, just focus on what, you're, what you've been, like I started music when I was six. So I started playing the violin when I was six years old. And um, you kind of know in your heart, in your mind and in your soul, it's all going to be connected when you think of something that you want to do and it'll be for you and you, your body will know it. So just take a step back. Um, don't think about it too much. Think about it just enough for it to like give your body jitters, but like it, you, you'll be calm and excited at the same time. That's, that's, that's the key. That's the key. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Sharon. Jason, what about you? What advice would you give to your former self deciding to choose Laurier? Yeah, so I would tell my former self because my former self was a bit of a scatterbrain. I have interest in biology. I was good in math, but I didn't really like it. I really kind of love to dabble in like the business side of things. Um, so I would just tell myself that, yeah, regardless of what program you would have chosen other than music, you probably would have regretted it uh, and would have had that mindset of, oh, I should have chose something else, right? Um, but even now I want to do, I want to study maybe after my undergrad, I want to study something related to massage therapy or physiotherapy um, or, or, you know, start my own business and be an entrepreneur. Um, but I wouldn't have, I, but I would say to my former self that, you know, um, doing an undergrad in community music at Laurier or any, or a common year at Laurier is not a waste of time, um, regardless of what your other interests are. It's definitely a, a good way to spend your my what my years of 18 to 22 17 to 22 yeah those those were these years are well spent at you know the faculty of music at Laurier. amazing you've grown a lot i'm sure <laughs> 
And Adriana, what about you? What would you say to your former self deciding whether Laurier is, is right for you? Honestly, I'm confident now that I made the right decision, but I was never I was never good at making decisions when I was younger. Still now, I'm, I'm still not the best at it, but I wish that I got more information about universities before picking because I honestly only picked, I, I picked Lori because I really liked it, but also because I was very interested in music therapy. So I said, okay, if I wanna do music therapy, Lori is the place to go. So there's no point in questioning it. But you should always um, learn about the support systems that universities have, see where you're going to be the most comfortable, find out um, what kinds of activities you can be involved in and pick a place where you know you're going to grow and thrive and become your best self by the end of your undergrad, because that's the most important thing at the end of the day. So don't be like me and choose based on a program because all programs are gonna get you somewhere great, regardless of what you choose but pick somewhere where academics are going to be fine and where you're going to do well um, personally with your mental health, with your physical health, with making new friends and having new experiences. So I would really recommend doing a campus tour. We're doing virtual campus tours and ask me anything appointments and you can book them with Sharon, Jason and I or other music students to learn more about our experience or if you're interested in another program, you could talk to someone in another program as well. And you can see what the university is like, find out uh, what supports are there for you, because I think that that's the most important thing when you're choosing a university is to make sure you're comfortable. Amazing. I think all of that was wonderful advice. And we really, Kathy and I, want to help you figure out if our program is right for you. Uh, we are confident that we have all the supports that Adriana mentioned in place to be able to foster a really healthy environment and community. But we want to make sure that you know, we can help you achieve what you want to achieve. So the biggest thing I would say is reach out to us. We have classes that you can attend. We have a mock lesson you can do. We have, or trial lesson, I should say. Um, we have lots of ways for you to engage with us as a faculty. So please email us, tweet us, Facebook us, Snapchat us, whatever way you feel most comfortable communicating with us. So overall, I want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to thank, say thanks to our students. Thank you to Kathy. Um, and we hope we will all see you at Laurier in the future. So we want to, we'll wave goodbye. Thanks everybody for coming. Bye.